Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, novelist Bryce Dallas Howard discovers that a spy stories are coming true in Matthew Vaughan's Argyle. Conway player Bryce Dallas Howard is the successful author of the Argyle series of books where the title character is a handsome glow-trotting super spy played by Henry Cavill. As she prepares to finish the fifth book, Ellie takes the train to see her mother Ruth played by Catherine O'Hara when a man named Aiden played by Sam Rockwell reveals that he's a real spy and rescues her from assassins. Ellie discovers that Argyle books have been coming true and the real-life version of the division that her fictional hero has been fighting against led by Brian Cranston's Ritter are determined to find out what what happens next and get ahead of the story before Ellie writes about it. Argar is the latest from Matthew Vaughan, best known for the Kingsman and Kick-Ass series of films and this is very much intended to launch a new franchise. And Vaughan has gone a bit meta with it, turning it into a cross-media franchise. When the film was originally announced, it was alleged that it was based on a book written by Ellie Conway. When reporters try to figure out who Conway was, they obviously struggle because as it turns out, Conway is the fictional main character of of this movie, which was only revealed when the trailer dropped last year. But coinciding with the film, there is actually a tie-in book allegedly written by Ellie Conway, and they're two pieces of the same universe. And so many people have been trying to work out who wrote this novel? Who is this a pseudonym for? Because obviously it's a ghostwriter of some kind. And this spiraled into the absolutely bizarre theory that has had to been debunked in multiple press interviews about the film that it was allegedly written by Taylor Swift. Because cats. Yeah, I don't know. Taylor Swift does some very weird things to people. The film itself, though, is written by Jason Fuchs, best known for Pan and Wonder Woman. And I don't know who the Conway of the novel is. Maybe it's a pseudonym for Vaughn himself. Really, though, the big question regarding Argyle is that given that Vaughn is so associated with Kingsman, having made three movies at this point, whether or not it can differentiate itself enough from his established franchise to feel fresh and new. And unfortunately, this Apple TV production mostly feels like Kingsman Light. Even the marketing has been doing a bit of trickery promoting this as a Henry Cavill vehicle and putting his scenes front and centre in the trailers and TV spots, which is understandable because he is playing the title character, albeit one that is actually a character within a book in the film. And so that means that in reality, Cavill is a supporting player. I think that's pretty obvious when you're really watching the trailer closely, but also the fact that they've accelerated his billing. In many of the promo materials, Cavill is given top billing, but in the actual film, he's billed fifth, which shows just how prominent he really is as a character, which is to say, not actually all that much. The opening sequence of the movie is where many of those clips come from, and it is actually quite fun. The casting of Cavill is a very canny one, because obviously it's a nod to the fact that he was considered genuinely to be James Bond at one point. It was very close between him and Daniel Craig, as I understand it. So Cavill has very much carried those James Bond rumours through much of his career. In fact, there's still people that's saying that he might be the next James Bond. Cavill is clearly kind of poking a bit of fun at that in the fact that he is playing a very, very over-the-top version of James Bond right down to the visual appearance where he's not just square-jawed as he usually is, he's also square haircutted as well. He's got this kind of almost Dolph Lundgren in Rocky IV kind of haircut about him. But he's so slick and so self-assured that it just comes across as absolute parody. And this continues as Argyle chases femme fatale Dua Lipa through Greece, smashing his car through multiple buildings in the process in a very digital recreation of the opening to police story. There's a very knowingly OTT and excessive action set 
piece. It sets the tone with a wing. The big risk with this gambit, though, is that when you reveal what the movie actually is, you don't want to disappoint the audience that genuinely wanted to watch the movie you were setting up the first time. And in this case, I genuinely would have watched an entire movie of Henry Cavill and John Cena teamed up together as super spies taking on an organization. That sounds like that would have been a really fun movie, but Argyle is not that. And Cavill and Cena do pop up later in the movie. We see more scenes from Conway's book, but also Conway imagines Aiden as Argyle at several points through the movie. So Cavill does keep popping up through the film, but really it's Bryce Dallas Howard's movie and Sam Rockwell's. It's not Henry Cavill's, unfortunately. And I think this actually backfires on the movie to a certain extent, not just because it will disappoint those that have been led in by the marketing, but genuinely because I think it's actually squandering some pretty good casting. Cavill is clearly having fun with the role, but also by stunt casting him alongside Dua Lipa, and Cena. What they end up doing is hardly using them in the movie. This becomes a recurring pattern in Argo. They keep stunt casting performers and then giving them roles where they barely get anything to do in them. Cena in particular seems to be constantly running into this. He just pops up in loads and loads of different movies and then he's only in them for about two minutes. And Argo is the latest example of this. And Cena has a lot of charisma. I think he could carry a movie like this. This. There is a part of me that genuinely was a little bit disappointed when Argyle reveals itself to more be in the style of something like Romancing the Stone. And that's not to say that I'm not partial to a riff on that formula. In fact, we've had a very successful one quite recently with The Lost City, where again, a writer discovers that what she's been putting in her novels is closer to the truth than she could have possibly imagined, and then finds herself in that very same adventure. That is what Argyle is, ultimately. But the thing is, it's also quite familiar. We've seen a lot of variations on that kind of story, and putting a spy spin on it doesn't quite make it feel as fresh as it could possibly be. And while the Cavill and Cena version of the movie might be even closer to Kingsman, there is a lot of the DNA here because Vaughn brings his usual style to the proceedings. I think that Argyle is at its most successful when it is trying to be romancing the stone. That portion of the movie is by far its strongest, mostly because it's a succession of chase sequences and clearly has a strong sense of where it wants to go, particularly in that train sequence, which is very well handled. The fight scene on the train, yes, it does suffer from the fact that it is a PG-13 movie, and so Vaughn is clearly pulling back. The Kingsman fight scenes were quite crunchy and bloody a lot of the time. There was some quite memorable just bits of OTT gore in them. You can't do that in a movie like this. So mostly it's generic pow pow pew pew kind of fight scenes. But actually Vaughn still knows how to carry an action set piece even if they aren't noticeably softened from its sister franchise. But Argyle is a lot softer than Kingsman in other ways as well because it's harkening closer to a wrong com formula. The Kingsman films were very much boys' own adventures with a kind of leery, ladsy sense of humour. It was deliberately edgy and provocative, and at times it did overstep the mark. You think of the final scene from The Secret Service, or the infamous bit from The Golden Circle, where a woman gets a tracking device inserted up her nether regions. There's none of that in Argyle, thankfully. The edge has almost been completely filed off here for better and for worse, because at least it doesn't have the very worst excesses of Kingsman in it, but there are points in Argyle where you wish it was just that little bit rougher, just that little bit meaner, and it feels like Vaughn is trying to create a very mainstream action movie that appeals to the masses, more so than Kingsman, in that it has a very hard R rating. So that means that a lot of the movie largely resides on the charm of Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell to carry it, and luckily, these are two actors with a lot of charm to spare. Rockwell, in particular, who steals a lot of this movie as Aiden. Rockwell isn't really doing anything that you would not associate with him usually, but I think that his persona, which is very kind of 
ironic and detached and laid back is a very different take than what we usually see with a spy very much by design the casting of Rockwell is deliberately a subversion to that kind of James Bond formula that Cavill has got turned up to 110%. So by putting him back and forth with Cavill early on on the train, you really get to see the difference and see how he portrays it in a bit more of a kind of laconic way and gives a little bit of a kind of knowing sense of humor to the proceedings, while Bryce Dallas Howard is very good at navigating her way through a lot of the changes sequences that a character has to kind of bumble her way through. Her character is riddled with anxiety that only exacerbated by the fact that people are trying to kill her the entire time. And a lot of the comedy is Rockwell trying to push past Howard's anxieties and get her to realise that she's more competent than she allows herself to be even as she watches the mounting body count with horror. And you would think that Rockwell and Howard wouldn't actually work together because they're not a traditional pairing but actually they do have very good chemistry and that carries a great chunk of the middle act of Argyle but if there is a problem with Argyle it's tone. Vaughn has said that he wanted the film to be a spy spoof which technically he was already doing with the Kingsman movies so Argyle needs to be bigger and broader he needs to really push that and he's doing it in the opening with Cena and Cavill but he doesn't keep the energy up when it reverts to Howard and Rock well you need to really push the comedy in this movie the absurdity of the situations that they found themselves in but also the kind of discrepancy between the spy world that ellie writes about and reality you could have mined that more for humor but unfortunately vaughn struggles with a problem that he's also faced in the kingsman movies where sometimes it feels like he's not sure how serious he wants the audience to take a moment argyle especially suffers from this because it's just not funny enough if you want to make a spoof make an outright spoof and i don't feel like vaughn commits to that too often the movie really presses upon the cat that ellie has in her backpack very often conspicuously cgi to get laughs that the rising itself simply isn't getting it's around the halfway point where argyle drops its big twist and that's the point where it really starts to suffer after that point there's a lot of time spent on lengthy expository dialogue scenes that try to explain to the audience what's going on and why it's happening and you know what really kills comedy fast long talky dialogue scenes and the movie compounds this error even further because it drops more twists on top of its twist sometimes it drops a twist and then untwists it in the very next scene and this requires more dialogue to try and straighten out what's happening and i think what's attempted to be done here is that they're trying to drop so many twists that it boomerangs back around to being funny to being absurdist in just how many rug pulls there are instead it just becomes irritating and overly convoluted and argo isn't actually all that complicated as a story even with the twist in the middle of it it's just all this stuff cluttering up the movie and unnecessarily lengthening it as well because so many of these scenes go on for such a long time when really it is killing the pacing it's not helped by the fact that argo was a covid shoot in 2021 and that is really obvious in the back half of the movie especially because it really feels bare a lot of the time you have the main core cast members and virtually nobody else they'll be walking around almost entirely empty locations these long dialogue scenes take place almost exclusively in empty rooms that are obviously set and sound stages a lot of the time even the glow trotting feels very cg there's a lot of conspicuous placed backgrounds behind the actors that suggest that they probably weren't actually shooting on location a lot of the time so it feels very claustrophobic especially in the second half of the movie speaking of that cast i don't think they're all very well utilized i've already mentioned the stunt casting but also you've got brian cranston as a fairly generic bad guy who's maybe one standout scene in the movie is the only time his character leaves his evil hideout there is some pleasure in seeing some of the cast members eventually play against type as more twists 
are revealed, but you've also got other cast members that are just totally wasted, particularly Kingsman stars Sophia Boutella and Samuel L. Jackson. Boutella shows up, and she literally is in the movie for maybe about five minutes, delivers an expository speech, and then wanders off never to be seen again. Remember how memorable she was in the first Kingsman movie? How such a standout she was in that film? In this, she does virtually nothing. She's not in any action scenes whatsoever. Meanwhile, Samuel L. Jackson is also similarly only in one location the entire movie, and the climax often cross-cuts to Jackson's character sat at his desk watching a basketball game. Wow, what an exciting role for the former Kingsman star to play! What Vaughn seems to have lost since Kingsman is restraint. He keeps trying to do more and bigger, and it's just making his movies bloated and overlong. And at 139 minutes, Argyle is very symptomatic of this when it needs to be roughly around two hours at best and is desperately in need of a prune. You really start to feel the length in the second half, especially in a long 40 minute stretch where there are no action sequences. Instead, Vaughn places them near the end of the film back to back with each other, and Vaughn has always showed a flair for action. They're often very highly stylized, almost cartoonish, and I think the Corridor shootout is a great example of this. The huge colourful plumes of smoke It's a very visually striking sequence. Unfortunately, Vaughn follows that with the worst action sequence in the entire movie involving skating on oil. Like a lot of blockbusters recently, Argyle features some well below part CGI, from poor compositing to unusually bad face replacements for stunt doubles. That was used quite a bit in the Kingsman movies and well done, but here they try to do it at several points and they just put the actors' faces on stunt doubles where their hair doesn't match, so it makes for a very weird experience, especially Sam Rockwell in the film's final action sequence, but that oil skating scene is going to very quickly become notorious. It's an example of a bad idea. It's just too silly to work, and then it's executed even worse because the whole time it looks like they're on a green screen. It's cartoony, but not in a good way. And I know it's meant to be a comedy scene. I know we're meant to be laughing, but we're laughing at it, not with it. It's a step too far, both tonally and in terms of what the effects are trying to execute. And with regards to the film's big twist, while I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag here, it becomes very obvious that Matthew Vaughan is a big fan of a certain mid-90s action movie, and that's fine. I'm a big fan of that movie too. I think it's one of the most underrated films of its era, even though it has developed quite a sizable cult following. And Vaughan adds quite a number of homages and references to that inspiration both visually, but also in terms of specific points like the aforementioned skating. But if you are going to invoke that movie, then you've got to be as fun and as entertaining as it, especially because that film does have quite a sizable edge. That's what should be in Argyle. Unfortunately, it just doesn't match it and ends up being inferior in the comparison. Argyle is a mess, but I won't deny that I did have fun with it at points, largely because of the sheer strength of its massive cast, many of whom are highly watchable performers, even if the film doesn't utilise them very well. They're elevating a script that I feel is undisciplined and unfocused. Vaughn shows flashes of what he really can do, especially in the action sequences, but far too often Argyle feels like a lesser version of what he's already done on the Kingsman movies, and it just feels like he's gone back to the spy well one time too many here. It's not different enough from Kingsman to feel novel, and honestly, he could do with trying something a little bit out of the box and getting back to basics. Argyle is often hampered by its overlong runtime, bad CGI, and generally feels overconfident in trying to be a franchise, especially in its mid credit scene, which feels like a massive miscalculation, especially after a perplexing ending. If you like this view and you want to support my work, you can give me a tip at my Ko-fi page or YouTube Super Thanks feature, which is right below the video. You can also help me turn the page at my Patreon, where you can find my videos early among other perks, including access to my Discord server, or you can sign it's my brand new YouTube memberships, which offers similar perks. Or well, you can simply like, share, and subscribe. It all helps. Until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out.